Hello learners, hope you are doing well. I welcome you all to the week 2 grade assignment solution video where we are going to solve the questions that were posed to us last week in the grade assignments. So without further ado, I think we should jump right into the question and in question 1, let's see, uh, the statement reads, the following procedure is executed using the shopping bills data set. At the end of the execution, diff, so this is a variable name called diff. Uh, stores the difference between the highest and the lowest total bill amount. Okay, so that makes sense because we want to find the maximum difference then. Uh, the programmer may have made mistakes in one or more steps. Identify all such steps if any. So this is also an important thing to note. Maybe if you guys are writing the qualifiers or any of your future exams, if such a statement is given, it means that there could be a case where none of the answers are correct and you can actually just pick a option called no mistake so that is also a possible case scenario in fact so let's see if that is the case here uh, then it says assume that all the steps not mentioned the options are free from errors uh, so if you don't see an option and you feel that that particular step is erroneous don't worry about it it's probably right and you can just move on and it also says that it's a multiple select question so this is quite important why because uh, there is a chance that there are more than one correct answers so as soon as you guys get the first correct answer please do not move on to the next question you guys have to wait uh, go through the options i trade through the options in fact and if you see that none of the other options are matching with your question then feel free to move forward but you guys definitely should go through all the options before moving in case of multiple select question. So having said that, let's go through the steps. So the first step says arrange all the cards in a single pile called pile 1. That's a pretty standard step. Uh, then they say that uh, in step 2 initialize the variables max to a huge number. Okay, in here, here it's uh, 10 million uh, and uh, min to 0 and diff to 0. So, anyways, we can uh, intuitively tell that max should be storing the maximum shopping bills amount and min is going to store the minimum shopping bills amount and diff, it's already given the question that it stores the difference between the highest and the lowest total bill amount. So, in that case, uh, as you can see here, from the algorithm, from uh, what we have learned in the classes, it said that to find the maximum shopping bills, you have to iterate through your shopping bills data set and when you see a total bill amount that is greater than max then you store that bill amount in max right which means that the first card that you go through should have a value that is greater than the max value that that is the current max value so in that case let's say i have a shopping bill of 285 just take an example okay this is the first shopping bill that i see and i i gave such a high number for max will i ever ever get a chance where this value would go into max in the first iteration definitely not why because this value it, it's it's uh, a such a high amount that nobody's going to be shopping for this amount and it, we can never get the true max value so the true max value can only be found if max is initially assigned the value 0 okay so let's say max is equal to 0 we iterate with the cards let's say this is the first card that we find and uh, when we compare these two cards we see that this is the total bill amount so let's just abbreviate it as tbm now let's say if the tbm current tbm is greater than max okay so this is your first iteration so in this case you can see that tbm is in fact greater than max so what does it mean that means i can move forward and i can say that now my max is going to have this value and uh, then you tell that max is equal to 285 and similarly you keep on moving forward and then finally let's say uh, something like a 1000 was the highest uh, bill amount 
so in that case what you do is then finally in the second to last the last iteration what you can see is that uh, this particular thousand is seen by max and then max uh, is lesser in that case so let's say in that iteration let's just say in the nth iteration what happens is that tvm is 1000 uh, and in that case we say that tvm is greater than max so the new value of max was going to be 1000 so you see here max was 1000 let's say uh, but what was happening is that imagine if you had kept this value as your uh, initial value of max even if we had seen 1000 we would have never assigned that 1000 to max because it would have always been less than the value of initially assigned value of max and it's incorrect so we do not want that to happen so because of that what we've done is we are going to keep max as zero in the first iteration and from there we're going to build forward so from there you can see that the it was incorrect the step two is already incorrect but let's see what about min we know that just as the opposite of max in min what we do is if the total bill amount that is the tbm is less than min then we assign this value of tbm to min so this is what is happening here so you see only in this case that is if the total bill amount is less than min so in the first iteration we know that if we want min to store the first value of tbm that is the total bill amount it should be such a high value that we know that it it will assign the value of the total bill amount to itself so for that the value of min should be out of the range of the entire uh, data set so let's say nobody is going to be shopping for 10 million at a grocery store so let's say that keeping that amount in mind we're going to assign that to min so that the first value of tbm that we see falls in the range and below the initial value of min so because of that we're going to assign the value of tbm to min and that is going to be your first minimum value so in that case step two is incorrect uh, but diff the value of diff should be zero but that doesn't make a difference we know that min and max were assigned incorrectly so because of that step two is incorrect so i've underlined step two then we say that if pile one is empty then stop the iteration so this is quite interesting let's come back to this step later i'm just going to leave a star here let's come back to this later uh, step four says read the top card in pile one so this is a pretty standard step this is correct step 5 says if total bill amount is greater than max then store the total bill amount in max that's also correct so that is the algorithm to find out the maximum value step 6 says if the total bill amount is greater than min then store the total bill amount in min see here also you have an incorrect uh, option why because we cannot have the same algorithm for max and min so to find out the maximum value this is the correct answer but to find out the minimum value this step is incorrect because we know that if you are finding out min then the total bill amount should be less than minimum if the current minimum value before you assign that total bill amount to minimum so because of that step 6 is also correct now moving on to the next step it says that step 7 it says move the current car to another pile called pile 2 and repeat from step 3 okay so here there is a sort of a loop happening so we are looping back to step 3 here so now I think there must be some other options also let's go and find out so the next option says that it is step 8 it says update value of diff to max minus 1 so it's see you see that you keep on uh, looping in this step so at one point you have to come to step 8 right so you're not coming to step 8 every time you see a card in pile 2 you have to you know take the card put it in pile 2 and then you move to step 3 so you cannot stop the iteration if you don't have any more cards in pile 1 what you have to do is you have to go to step 8 so that is where this error comes in so there are three errors as of now in this option so let's look at what are the options here 
So option one says step two incorrect initialization of variable max that is one of the correct answers. Step two says incorrect initialization of variable min that is also the correct answer. Step three says the statement should be if pile one is empty then go to step eight that is exactly that is the correct answer why because we cannot stop the iteration because we never go to step eight that is calculating the diff difference so because of that that is the incorrect answer then step six says incorrect conditional statement update min um, that is also correct as you can see here i said initially it was uh, just a minute so initially what they had said is the total bill amount should be greater than min only then you have to store the total bill amount in min but this algorithm is fine to find out the maximum to find minimum you have to do this and then you get the correct answer so this is also a correct answer so you see in this particular question that is question number one you had four correct options so the option 5 says uh, no mistake but that is not correct answer because we already found 4 mistakes and uh, that is exactly how you do the select questions that is multiple select questions. So having seen this let's move on to the next question which is question number 2. Right. So let's uh, read the statement first. Uh, at the end of execution of the given procedure on the scores data set, what will A and B represent? Okay, so you have seven steps here. Let's go, go through these steps one by one. So step one says arrange all the cards in a single pile called pile one. Step two says maintain two variables A and B and initialize them to 101. Okay, uh, then it says that if pile one is empty, then stop the iteration. Uh, read the top card in pile one. If A is greater than chemistry marks, then store chemistry marks in A. So we all know what this algorithm stands for. We just saw it in the previous question. And this algorithm actually stands for finding the maximum value. Right? So it says that if your current marks is greater than, uh, pardon me, this is actually for the minimum value. Uh, my mistake there guys this is actually for the minimum value so if a is greater than the chemistry marks that means we all know that if your current minimum is greater than whatever is your let's say marks then you store that marks in the variable called min which means you are looking at the current minimum so the marks if the current marks is less than the current value of minimum then you store that current value of marks in minimum so that means that you're looking at the minimum number of marks so that is what step 5 says so let's just write it here so that you guys can remember that so a is representing minimum marks okay now step 6 says if mathematics marks is greater than b then store mathematics marks in b so again this i think you guys must be sure of by now that this is to see your maximum marks so b is maximum marks the algorithm for finding out maximum and it says that move the current card to another pile called pile 2 and repeat from step 3 okay now let's see how they've initialized a and b we know that your current marks have a range of 0 to 100 so this is basically the range in which you can score marks in any exam right so what happens now so what you do is you check if min and max have been assigned correctly so we know that minimum marks is always assigned a value outside the range of your current uh, observations, right? So as you can see that min has been assigned the value of 101 correctly. So the initial value of A is set to 101. The initial value of B is also set to 101. So you can see from this statement that if mathematics marks is ever greater than B, then they store mathematics marks in B. But 
your max marks can never be, never be more than 101. So B will remain as 101 for the entire duration of this iteration. And at the end of execution, B will still remain 101. But you see, A is actually initialized correctly. So whenever you see a marks, any marks that is less than the current minimum, that is 101, it will take that value of chemistry marks, right? So in that case, A will definitely have the minimum chemistry marks. So this is what B will have. But A will remain 101 through the entire duration of this iteration and at the end of execution, this will remain as 101. So, seeing that, we know that the correct answer to this question is option number C. And what does option number C say? It says that A represents the lowest marks of chemistry, whereas B will remain as 101. So, since this question is done, I think we can move on to the next question, which is question number three. So this is question number three. Uh, the statement reads, at the end of execution of the given procedure, using the words data set, so here we use the words data set, what will A and B represent? Again, we have the same sort of uh, question as the previous one, so let's go through it. Uh, step 1 says we arrange all the cards in a single pile called pile 1. We maintain two variables a, b and initialize them to 1000. So again make a note of this step a and b initialize to 1000. Uh, it says that if pile 1 is empty then stop the iteration. Uh, read the top part of pile 1. Then it says that if the letter count is less than a then store a in b and letter count in a. So this is an algorithm that you find uh, when you are trying to find out the second lowest value right and it says that if letter count is greater than a then the letter count is uh, if the letter count is greater than a and letter count is less than b then store the letter count in b uh, so this these two steps if done together what you find out is you find the largest value right the largest value is put in a and the second largest value is put in b so be it anything be it marks be it letter count be it uh, number of uh, words in a paragraph or whatever it is so if you use this sort of an algorithm where in the first step you say that if the letter count is less than a then you store the letter count you store a in b and the letter count in a Whereas if the letter count falls between A and B, then you store the letter count in B. So you keep on doing this and what happens is, let's look at the options. So the options here state that A is the largest word length and B is the smallest word length. So uh, that is not accurate because uh, we know this particular algorithm this particular algorithm stores is for the minimum value right so this particular algorithm is for the minimum value so a is the smallest word this is the smallest word so that is a so a should be smallest word so in such cases what you guys have to do is you have to look at the options which you know the, which suffice your conditions so we only have two options that state that a is the smallest word length that is b and c now what you have to do is now look at the second option it says b is either the largest word length or b is the second smallest word length so you see let's go to step six it says that if the letter count is greater than a and the letter count is less than b that means if it is if it falls in that range between a and b where we know that a is the minimum value that means that b has to be the second smallest word right because since a is the smallest word length and we're finding a letter count that's between a and b 
which means that b has to be the second smallest word length so in that case the correct answer for this question is option number c which says that a is the smallest word length and b is the second smallest word length because the smallest word length is always being stored in a but the second smallest word length right here is being stored in b so because of that we are doing this sort of an algorithm where we want to find out the smallest word length that is a and the second smallest word length which is stored in b so having completed this question i think we should move on to the next question which is question number four and uh, let's go through these steps so the statement first let's read the statement it says that at the end of execution of the given zero code on the words data set what will a represent so that's an interesting question let's see uh, step one is arrange all the cards in a single file called pile one maintain two variables a and b initialize them to zero so that's given right here uh, if pile one is empty then stop the iteration then it says read the top card in pile one then in step five it says that add letter count to variable b okay so this is important step let's so it says add not assign so that means if you have b and in the first iteration let's say this word had five letters it becomes five in the second iteration if the word has let's say six letters it becomes five plus six that is eleven then in third iteration let's say that it has two words what happens is it becomes 13 and so on so it just keeps on adding the word the letter count to variable b so let me just erase this for now so now having said that let's move on uh, step 6 says that if word does not end with a full stop then execute step 9 so that means if the word is in the middle of the sentence you keep on moving to step 9 you do not go to step 7 and 8 okay step 9 says move the current card to another card called pile 2 and repeat from step 3 then it takes us back to step 3 and you keep on doing this and once the word ends in a full stop then you come to step 7 which says if word ends with a full stop and b is greater than a then store b in a okay and it says reinitialize the variable b to zero so i think this step is should be pretty much clear by now that when we say that if the value that we are counting let's say that is the letter count b if it is greater than a any variable a initialized to zero so here a denotes the variable max so we are basically storing the maximum value of b and what is the maximum value of b what is b in fact storing b is storing the total number of letters and since we know that it's storing it until it sees a full stop that means it's storing the total number of letters in a sentence in just one sentence we are seeing the total number of letters that come not the number of words mind you it is the total number of letters that fall within a sentence and once we see that we are trying to find out the maximum number of letters in a sentence in this particular paragraph or the words data set. So once we find that, we store that value in A and we reinitialize the variable to B to 0 and then we continue with step 3. So let's go through the options and see if there is an option that corresponds to our uh, whatever inference that we have made. Uh, so option a says the length of the shortest sentence based on the number of words that is definitely not the answer length of the longest sentence based on the number of words so this could be a correct answer but i urge you all to go through all the options before you make up your mind so let's see option c it says that length of the longest sentence based on the number of letters so you see they were trying to confuse us by using number of words so this definitely was not the correct answer we wanted to see the length of the longest sentence based on the number of letters. So you guys should not jump to conclusions as soon as you see the first correct answer or first answer that seems to be correct. Go through all the options and see which one is more closely related to your uh, question. So option C says length of the longest sentence based on the number of letters. 
uh, let's just go to option D as well. It says length of the shortest sentence based on the number of letters. That's definitely not the case because we know that in step 7, this algorithm is to find out the maximum value, be it anything, be it height, marks, uh, words, letters, whatever it is. So this step 7 is an uh, algorithm to find out the maximum, which means that option C is the correct answer for this particular question, which is your question number 4 and uh, the correct answer is option c which says it is the length of the longer sentence based on the number of letters so with that let's move on to question number five so reading the question it says assume that a b and c are three distinct integers what will x represent after execution of the following procedure so step one says maintain variable x and initialize it to zero uh, then it says if a is greater than b then go to step 4 Then it says if a or pardon me if b is greater than c and b in x L store c in x So it says that if b is greater than c Then store b in x else store c in x Okay, and it says that if a is greater than c then store a in x L store C in X. Okay, so let's break this down. So the, we have three integers that is A, there is B, and there is C. So what do we want to know? We want to know if A is greater than B. So let's say if this is true, right? If this is true, what happens is You check if A is greater than C. Okay, so now again A is greater than B. Now, if it is true, we check if A is greater than C. Okay, if so, then you store A in X. Right? That means if this is true. If not, what do we do? we store c in x right now what is happening is if b is greater than c right now we know that see if a is not greater than b we will not go to this step uh, pardon me if a is greater than b we will not go to this step because it says directly go to step 4 so since a is not greater than b we take this false this root and now we check if B is greater than C now if B is greater than C what do we do then we have two options right if it's greater we will store the value of B this is true we store the value of B in X if this is not true that is false then we store the value of C in X so from this flowchart what are you guys able to understand so it says that if A is greater than B and A is greater than C, that means A is the largest amongst B and C. So that is why we are storing the value of A in X. Now if A is greater than B and let's say C is greater than A, okay, that's what is this false statement, right? What does that mean? That means A is greater than B and if C is greater than A, that means C is greater than both A and B. So I hope you guys are able to understand the logic of this. If that is the case, then you store the value of C in X. Now let's say A is not greater than B, which automatically means that B is greater than A, right, in the false condition. And B is greater than C. That means b is greater than a b is greater than c which means that b is the largest number which is why it has been stored in x now if b is greater than a but it is not greater than c that means b will be less than c that means now c is greater than both a and b in that case the value of x takes c 
that means what is this procedure trying to tell us it's trying to tell us that x will store the largest amongst a b and c so looking at the options the first option itself gives us the correct answer it says that x is going to store the largest among a b and c so just you know out of curiosity you can go through the other options as well uh, option b says among smallest among a b c it's not that's not true uh, c says that x will always be zero that's definitely not true because we are anyway storing one of the values you know in uh, this particular uh, uh, x and option d says the second smallest among a b and c uh, that's also not true we have seen from this flow chart that you are only going to store the maximum value the maximum value of among a b and c in x so the correct answer to question number five is option a which is we're going to store the largest among a b and c so with that let's move on to the next question which is question number six so let's read the question first what will be the value of x after the execution of the following procedure using the suppose data set so going through the steps we can see that uh, in step one we arrange all the calls in a single file called file one in step two we maintain the variables a b c d and y and initialize them to zero Ste in step 3 we maintain a variable x and initialize it to none so we know that when you initialize any variable to none it is a string type so it's not going to be integers it's going to be a string then it says that in step 4 if pile 1 is empty then stop the iteration and in step 5 it says read the top card in pile 1 and then it also says in step 6 that if the town or city is Chennai then add 1 to A and if A is greater than Y store A in Y and Chennai in X if the town city is Bangalore then add 1 to B if B is greater than Y store B in Bangalore and Bangalore in X pardon me and then it says in step A that if town or city is Madurai then add 1 to C and if C is greater than Y store C in Y and Madurai in X and similarly in step 9 it says if the town or city is Vellore then add 1 to D and if D is greater than Y then store D in Y and Vellore in X so I think this is a pretty you know a very standard uh, question only thing they have given four variables where you are going to be adding every time you see a city corresponding to that variable that means if it's Chennai you add to A if it's Bangalore you add to Bengaluru pardon me you add to B if it is Madurai you add to C and if it is Vellore you add to D now you keep on adding in such a way such so that what happens is every time you see that particular state or pardon me that particular city you're going to add to that variable and if that variable is greater than your current value of y right in that case what happens you put Chennai in the variable x or you put Bengaluru in variable x or you put Madurai or you put Vellore in variable x and then you go to the next step so that means if your current city or the current number of cards that you have seen whose city is greater than what is y so here again you can see that all these algorithms you can see here all of them denote the same procedure which is to find out the maximum value if c greater than y then store c in y if a greater than y store a in y all this relate to maximum where the variable y denotes the maximum value so if the total number of students in Chennai is maximum then you store the value Chennai in X similarly for Bengaluru similarly for Madurai and similarly for Vellore so the question states what will be the value of X after execution of the following procedure 
so for this what you have to do is you have to go through the data set you have to see the cards and what you have to do is you have to check which city occurs the most in your data set so that is what you have to do here so if such a question comes for the exam do not sit and add one to Chennai bank below don't do that you guys just have to go make a note uh, you know make say make tally marks for Chennai you know or for Bengaluru and you know just make such tally marks and what you have to do is you have to find out the maximum value now in this case I've gone through the data set and what we are able to find out is that total number of people in Chennai that is A let me just erase this for a second yeah so the total number of people in Chennai was seen to be 8 total number of people in Bengaluru were 5 number in Madurai were 4 and in Vellore you had a total of 3 people so which means that A had the maximum number of people that were coming from Chennai so in that case what happens is the value of X will be that of Chennai so the correct answer for this question that is question number 6 is option A which states Chennai so with that I think we can move on to the next question which is question number 7 it's a flow chart and it says that let A, B and C be three distinct integers given as input to the following flowchart what will x represent at the end of the flowchart so this if you guys remember is very much similar to what we had right so what does it say it says that if a is greater than b and b is greater than c then store x and c so you see this is sort of an opposite of what we had in the previous question because if A is greater than B and B is greater than C, so automatically it means that C is the lowest integer amongst A, B and C. Right? So that means A is greater than B and B is greater than C, which means that C is the smallest in integer. If A is greater than B, right, but c is greater than b see if it's yes then this option is taken if it is no then this is the option c and b is your lowest integer and that is you know the values input in x similarly if a is not greater than b that means if b is greater than a and if we check that if a is greater than c that means a is greater than c again x takes the value of c which is the smallest integer amongst a b and c if not b is greater than a but c is also greater than a which means that a is the smallest integer and x takes that value so this question was pretty simple it was just the opposite of what we had seen earlier uh, so in this case what does x take x actually takes the smallest amongst a b and c so you see that is the correct answer in this question that's question number seven the value of x would be the smallest amongst a b and c moving on to question number eight here i think it's a pseudo code so let's read the question the following pseudo code is executed using the scores data set what will count represent at the end of the execution of the pseudo code so you see that count is first initialized to zero in the initial step then it says that while pile 1 has more parts so what does while statement here say it states that we are going to you know loop through this step the entire you know you read from the first the line number 3 to line number 17 and then back to line number 3 so this loop is going to happen until your pile which is your pile of cards has more cards in it so once the pile is empty we just completely come out of this uh, while loop okay now let's go into the while statement let's see what is it there to tell us it says that read the top card x from pile 1 
and it says that you initialize the value of c to 0 and it says if x dot mathematics is less than 76 c is equal to c plus 1 if x dot physics is less than 76 c is equal to c plus 1 if x dot chemistry is less than 76 c is equal to c plus 1 if c is equal to equal to 0 then you increment the value of count by 1 so you see if the mathematics marks is 75 or less right so it is 75 or less than 75 the marks so this this symbol is lesser than or equal to we'll see that later it says that you increment the value of c but when will c remain zero it will only remain zero if the mathematics marks were more than 75 right less than 76 means it does not include 76 so that means it is 75 or less so it includes 75 so c would be zero only if the total marks of the student in all three subjects were greater than 75 so that is what this means so this is a sort of an inference that you have to make from this so what is the question it says that what will count represent at the end of execution so as i told you that count here is going to make a note of all the students who have scored greater than 75 in their marks right greater than 75 so let's see the options the options state option a number of students who scored less than 75 in all three subjects definitely not if they have scored less than 75 c would be zero uh, pardon me c would be three because it would increment c every time it sees a marks less than 75 so it becomes three then it will increment the value of count then again it will be initialized to zero so for the next iteration so that's what's going to happen so no it's not option a option b says number of students who scored more than 75 marks in all three subjects now that is actually the correct answer but i want you guys to go through the other two options as well to see why it is incorrect option number c says that number of students who scored more than 76 marks in all three subjects now this is not correct why should it be more than 75 and not 76 because you see c is only incremented if the total number of marks is less than 76 not less than or equal to 76 which means when will c remain zero is if they have scored more marks than 75 that is not including 75 that means it should be greater than or equal to 76 where 76 is included so it's not the number of students who have scored more marks than 76 even if they have scored 76 c would not be incremented by one c would remain zero if the person has scored 76 in both in all three physics chemistry and maths c would remain as zero so that is what will happen so in that case c is incorrect and uh, d says the number of students who scored less than 76 marks that's definitely not true we are trying to see the number of students who have scored more than 75 marks so this is also incorrect so the correct option is option b we had already seen that this is the correct option but i just wanted you guys to know why options c and d are incorrect because such questions can be a little confusing but all you have to do is concentrate a bit see what is it they are asking go through the question once more once twice how many times you would like but just have an idea of what is it that they are actually asking us so we want to know the number of students who scored more than it's not greater than or equal to it's more than 75 marks in all three subjects so that is your correct answer for question number eight moving on to question number nine uh, let's read the statement it says the following flowcharts executed using the scores data set uh, assume that radhika and raghav both have scored the highest total marks across the whole data set which is 280 so this is important radhika and raghav they have scored the highest total marks across the whole data set which is 280 let cards are arranged in such a way 
that Raghav's card is below Radhika's card, what will the value of A and B be at the end of execution? Right? So let's look at this flowchart for a second. Let's understand the flowchart. So here is the first uh, box. That's the start. Uh, what we say see is that in the next box it says a is equal to 0 and b is none. That means a is an integer whereas b is a string. Now it says that if pile 1 is empty, so you know that this is a decision box, right? A, a diamond box that is where you make a decision. So if pile 1 is empty, you stop the iteration. If it's not empty, you pick the top card x from pile 1, okay? It says x dot total is greater than a, right? Again, this is a decision box. So what happens is if x dot total is greater than a, if not, you move x to pile 2, right? If yes, then a is equal to x dot total, a, b is equal to x. So we know that this algorithm, this particular algorithm is to find out the maximum marks. Now it is very important to remember that what is given here is x dot total, uh, excuse me, let's say that x dot total is greater than a. It does not say that x dot total is greater than or equal to a. This is not what it says. It says if x dot total is greater than a. And it's also said that the cards are arranged in such a way that Raghav's card is below Radhika's card. So we know that they have both scored 280, which is the maximum, joint maximum marks. So what is what's going to happen? So in this case, do not waste your time going through the data set. They have asked values of A and B. That is correct. But they don't want you to go through the data set. They want you to, you know, this sort of a critical thinking is what they're trying to develop in us. What they're trying to ask us is, if X dot total is greater than A, then you put you assign the value of the total marks to A and the name of the person who has scored the total marks in B. So <clears throat> let's say that Radhika's card comes first. Why? Because Raghav's card is below Radhika's card. So we see Radhika's card first, followed by Raghav. Right? And what happens is both have scored 280. So, you see that A, when it goes to Radhika's card, is going to have the value 280 in it and B is going to have Radhika's name on it. It's going to be stored in it, right? But what happens when it comes to Raghav's card? Because Raghav has also scored 280, right? But you know that 280 is not greater than 280. They're both equal. 280 is equal to 280 but the decision box the decision uh, here is is x dot total greater than a only if that is the case only if the total marks is greater than your current maximum will you make any changes to a and b if they are not if a, the total marks is not greater than a we are not going to make any changes as such so because of that, since Radhika's card was seen first, A and B will have the values of 280 and Radhika respectively, right? So it's not going to change when it comes to Raghav's card, even though Raghav has scored the same number of marks as Radhika. But what, what we have asked the flowchart here to do is, we have asked it to keep Raghav's name, uh, pardon me, Radhika's name and keep A as the total number of marks maximum marks which is 280 so at the end of execution even though we have got over these two names the card that came first which is radhika's card that the values corresponding to that will be assigned to a and b so going through the options we know that a so here again we can see that we know that a is an integer type b is a string type so automatically options C and D will be incorrect because it says that A is going to store a string, which is not possible. So because of that, we know we can discard two options right off the bat. Now coming to options A and B, 
we know that Radhika's name is what was coming first and that is what is going to be till the end of the execution of this program because of which option A is the correct option for this question that is question number 9. The correct answer is option A which is uh, A is equal to 280 and B is equal to Radhika. Finally, we have this question that is question number 10 and the statement reads the given pseudo code is executed using the words data set. At the end of execution, count finds the number of sentences with maximum number of words. Choose the correct option to complete the pseudo code. So this is to be read again that count finds the number of sentences with maximum number of words. So let's go through the pseudo code. It says that count is equal to zero, a variable a is zero and b is also initialized to zero. It says that while pile 1 has more cards, you read the top card x from pile 1 and a is equal to a plus 1. So we know that in the words data set, each card is going to, is representing one word. So every time you read a card, that means every time you read a sentence, you are going to initialize the value of or increment the value of a by 1. If word dot x dot word ends with a full stop, and if a is equal to equal to b, you do something, right? We'll see what what is it that we're going to do. If a is greater than b, and b is equal to a, so in this case, what we're doing is, if a is equal to equal to b, that means a and b have equal values, you do something, which is statement one. We'll come to that in the options. And if a is greater than b, we assign the value of a to b right so that's what we'll do okay and then we do something with statement 2 we'll come to that in a while then we say that a is equal to 0 so every time we see a word that ends with a full stop then we reinitialize the value of a to 0 and then every time we see a card we initialize uh, increment the value of a by 1 and finally when we come out of this if statement Right. When we come out of this statement, we move x to pile 2. Now let's see what happens in uh, the first and second statement. So statement 1 says count is equal to 1 and a is equal to a plus 1. That is statement number 2. So why would we say that count is equal to 1? So you see here that if a is equal to equal to b, that means uh, you have two cards right uh, and we want to find out that a is um, so you have count and you say that you find the number of sentences with the maximum number of words so we have two of these we have a and we have b two variables and we increment a every time we see a word that means we are counting the total number of sentences in the word right and if a is equal to b then we have found two sentences with the same number of words right so in that case we have to increment the value of count isn't that right so if a is equal to equal to b that means there are two words right because in the first iteration b is anyway going to be zero and any value of a is going to be greater than b so we assign that value of b to a right so in that case b is going to hold the current maximum number of sentences so when that happens what do we do we have to initialize the value of count to one uh, pardon me that's statement number two so initialize the value of count to one and we ha we are not supposed to do anything with a or the value of count we are not supposed to do anything to them because when we see a value that is greater than your current maximum we know that that is going to be the maximum value right so let's say in my first iteration i think i should uh, explain this with an example in my first iteration i found a sentence with let's say five words okay so this is the value of a currently because i have seen five words i have seen a full stop now i come into this statement now let's start with statement 2 
because in the first iteration b is going to be 0 so any value of a even if it's 5 is going to be greater than b so 5 is greater than 0 which means a is greater than b right so what we do is now we assign this value of a to b which means the value of b is going to be 5 in the first iteration right which means what we do now we have found our first sentence with the maximum number of words that means since count is counting the number of sentences with the maximum number of words count should be initialized to one because we have only found one sentence that is greater than uh, or that has the greatest number of words okay now in the second iteration let's say we found another word another sentence with five words again a is equal to five so here now we enter this first if statement it says that if b or a is equal to equal to b so in that what happens in that case now we have found two sentences that have the same number of maximum words which is a and b that means two sentences as of now that means the value of count should be incremented by one because now we have two variables right or pardon me two sentences right that now have um, words that are the maximum that is five number of words are there so this there are two sentences right now which have the maximum number of words now again move forward now let's say in this case next you found a a sentence with six number of words now when you have six number of words you don't have to enter this first if statement because a is not equal to equal to b that means the value of a and b are differing but yes a is greater than b so now you init you assign the value of b to a that means b is going to be equal to six so now the sentence with six words is your new maximum the new sentence with maximum number of words is going to be b which means now you have to reinitialize count to one because now you only have one sentence with six number of words so you see your statement two should say that count is equal to one why because each time you see a new maximum you have to reinitialize the value of count to one but every time you see a sentence with the same number of uh, same number of words as the previous maximum you have to increment the value of count that means add one to the current value so that should be your statement one so you see your statement one should be count is equal to count plus one whereas your statement two should be count is equal to one and you see from here that your option c the option c states that your statement 1 should be count is equal to count plus 1 whereas your statement 2 says that your count should be equal to 1. So this satisfies both our criteria, and that is why option C is actually the correct answer. So with that uh, learners we have come to the end of the week 2 grade assignment solutions. I hope you found this session productive. I hope you were able to understand something further from what you've learned in the classes from what you were able to comprehend from the classes and um, i hope we were able to even help you solve this great assignment and help you understand these questions uh, much better so thank you learners and uh, hope you guys do well for your exams as well thank you learners